Hello, welcome to today's devotion. We are in the last chapter of Luke, have been now for a while, and it's the resurrection. Chapter 24 starts with the first day of the week, which is a Sunday, and it was the Sunday in which it, it, they, they didn't have names for the days of the week in Hebrew. They had numbers and names referring to the numbers, but they were primarily just labeled, if you will, as the number until they came to the seventh day, and that was called the Sabbath or the Sabbat. And um, so Sunday being the first day of the week is when they discovered that Jesus has been res resurrected. Um, last devotion, we were looking at um, disciples that um, were on the road to Emmaus, and were, while they were on the road, um, they were... They encountered the risen Christ, Cleopas being the only person that we know that had the name of these disciples. And they went and then told the 11 what they had seen. And this is where we're going to pick it up today. So let's pray. We'll get into it. Thank you, Father, for your word, for your kindness, and for your grace. As we go into your word today, Lord, please open our hearts and our minds to hear what you have to say and to walk in the fullness of your peace and joy and love now and forever. Amen. Verse 36 of chapter 4 reads as follows. As they were saying these things, he himself, himself stood in their midst. He said to them, peace to you. Now, when we're reading this verse and it says they were saying these things, they're referring to the testimony that the disciples that were on the road to Damas or, uh, Emmaus, their interaction with Jesus, and they were sharing what took place then. In, a diff in addition, <clears throat> when we get to verse 33, um, they, they came to the 11, and in the verse 34, the 11 said, The Lord has truly been raised and has appeared to Simon. Then they began to describe what had happened on the road and how he had made known to them in the breaking of bread. So they're, they're sharing. He had not only, Jesus not only revealed who he was to the two disciples that were on the road to Emmaus, but also to the 11 and to Peter. I'm sorry, to, 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 to Peter as they were talking about it. In fact, let's just go back and take a look at verse 30. This is Jesus reclining at the table with the two disciples that were on their way to Emmaus. Verse 30, it was as he reclined at the table with them that Jesus took the bread, blessed and broke it and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened and they recognized him, but he disappeared from their sight. So this is the first time that he was recognized by them. Verse 32, they said to each other, were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking with us on the road and explaining the scriptures to us? That very hour they got up and returned to Jerusalem. They found the eleven and those with them gathered together who said, this is the eleven and the other disciples, the Lord has truly been raised and has appeared to Simon. Then they began to describe what had happened on the road. So you get this sharing of these experiences that they had with the Christ, with Jesus, the resurrected Christ. And that's, this then brings us to verse 36. As they were saying these things, sharing these things, he himself stood in their midst. He said to them, peace to you. But they were startled and terrified and thought they were seeing a ghost. Why are you troubled? He asked them. And why do doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Touch me and see, because a ghost does not have flesh and bones, as you can see I have. Having said this, he showed them his hands and feet. But while they were still amazed and in disbelief because of their joy, he asked them, do you have anything here to eat? So they gave him a piece of a broiled fish, and he took it and ate it in their presence. He told them, these are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, 
that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. He also said to them, this is what is written. The Messiah would suffer and rise from the dead the third day and repentance for forgiveness of sins would be proclaimed in his name to all the nations beginning at Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. And look, I am sending you what my father promised. As for you, stay in the city until you are empowered from on high. And then this is... Um, this is verse 49. It gets at, right after that, the few verses that were talked about the ascension and that. Let's just read those as well. Then he led them out to the vicinity of Bethany. Remember, Bethany is where Lazarus, Mary, and Martha lived. And lifting up his hands, he blessed them. And while he was blessing them, he left them and was carried up into heaven. After worshiping him, they returned to Jerusalem with great joy. And they were continually in the temple praising God. This ends this volume. Remember, Luke is the gospel of Luke is one volume that is the first volume attached to the second book or the second volume, which is the book of Acts. Now, things that are important that run through all of all of Scripture. Um this 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 book if you will is a book of revelation it is not a book that you can read and from your own ability from your own understanding from your own intellect understand it it if it doesn't confuse you you may write it off as a childish um, myth that some people made up. But when you understand the power of the scripture, that it is revelation. And this is the key thing that, that runs through all of the resurrection stories, that God is revealing something that is so far beyond their conditioned way of thinking that it takes a while for them to get it. Because as Jesus refers in his parables, the kingdom of God and the message of it and the reality of it and the truth of it is like pouring new wine into into wineskins. You don't put it into old wineskins. Your old mindset will not be able to figure it out. We spend most of our lives trying to figure things out. And to some degree, we have success, which is why we do it. We have to figure certain things out. We're created with a mind that's able to do that. But with regards to spiritual reality, we cannot. It is something that must be revealed to us. And it's the Holy Spirit, Jesus' Spirit, His Holy Spirit, that reveals it to us. He begins this process, as we see in both accounts in which He appears to his disciples in both accounts in chapter 24, this is exactly what he's doing. He's revealing. Now, revelation is something that is beyond our control. We don't get to control when or how or in what manner God is going to reveal scriptures to us. We stand on the promise that if we truly want to know him and understand him, we ask him and he gives abundantly to those who seek him. But it's still in his time frame, in his way, we don't have control over it. But he is a gracious God and wants to be known. So as we pursue understanding, as we pursue knowing him, he will reveal it. And there is a, um, a, a, a process to this. When you take a look, you have the disciples that were on their way to Emmaus, and they're actually having an argument. In fact, verse 15 says, and while they were discussing and arguing, Jesus himself came near and began to walk along with them. 
Arguing will always take place when we're not in a position or in a posture of receiving from God the revelation. When we take on the posture that we need to figure it out, that it is up to us to figure it out, then it will eventually devolve, if you will, into argument. Because this is how we engage with each other with regards to figuring things out from human perspective. But when we put ourselves into the position of seeking God, remember, Jesus' command, his instruction, seek first the kingdom of God and everything else will be given to you. But it's the seeking. And the seeking has to take precedence over the figuring out. Because we'll never figure it out. And if we feel responsible for figuring it out, we will get frustrated because we are unable to do it. God never in any of his commands tells any of his disciples, figure it out. Not once. Because he realizes, A, we can't, and B, he will reveal it to us. We're not God. So when you take a look at the two disciples that were walking, he begins to reveal to them. In verse 25, he says to them, How foolish and slow you are to believe all that the prophets have spoken. He's revealing the scriptures that they have. And these are the prophets, the prophetic writings. Wasn't it necessary for the Messiah to suffer these things and enter his glory? Then beginning with Moses. Now, the book of Moses is the first five books of our Bible. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. And so beginning with those five books and all the prophets, he interpreted for them the things concerning himself in all of the scriptures. It's revelation. They could not have received that revelation until after the resurrection when Jesus was glorified and, and came back with a glorified, resurrected, physical body with completely different properties. And this is what Jesus begins to do with them. And then when he ascends into heaven, sends his Holy Spirit to continue with that work of revealing himself to us. And the more we become familiar with his scriptures, sometimes it's just one line in a scripture, one of his teachings, the more we become familiar with it, the more it becomes a, a, a way of life, the more that we internalize his truth and it becomes a foundation, the more he can reveal the truth behind it. And the more that he reveals the truth behind it, the more we learn to habitually and routinely wait for him to reveal. And that waiting and that seeking is what replaces worry. Worry, fear, anxiety is the mind trying to figure out something it cannot. And so he sets us free from that by giving us the instruction to seek the kingdom and giving us his Holy Spirit. There's more to be said about this. We're going to get into it next time as well. But as we go through this last chapter, may what we glean from it give us further understanding, give us insight, give us revelation that like the first disciples took, takes and, and just gives us a passion, a burning, a great joy within our hearts.
Well, I look forward to uh, getting into the 24th chapter again next time. Until then, may the peace of God be with you. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.